Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. I am Bethany, welcome to my studio here. I am a pastel painter, and today we're going to the beautiful island of Hawaii. I have this older piece that I painted for my students over on Patreon from a couple of years ago, and I decided to share it with you. This lesson is part real time. We're going to be talking a ton about underpaintings, especially on this really nice mounted board. I'm so excited to paint the scene for you today. This is from the beautiful big island of Hawaii. I have friends that live on the island and we have gotten to visit them numerous times. It's one of my very favorite places in the entire world. And this happens to be a scene from Hilo Bay, which is on the windward side of the island where the rainforest is. Of course, the big island is known for its volcanoes that are active and also for its black sand beaches, which can be difficult to paint because how do you paint black sand with it looking believable and realistic without it seeming just this void of, of darkness. And so that's what we're going to be experimenting and playing with today. I am working on a piece of 500 grit, but this is a board. This is one of the premier boards by UART. And I'm just using a gray Carbothello. I just grabbed this color um, because it was closest to the graphite, which I usually love to use, but I couldn't find a pencil on my desk of all things. Sketching in the major shapes, the distant horizon. Of course, this is gonna be a tall horizon and also the, the wave pattern, how it recedes. And whenever I'm sketching something like this, especially the side view of a wave, you have to think about it almost as a street view where there is one point perspective. So you can see how those lines are basically forming a triangle to where your eye goes off in the distance. This is a very high horizon line and I've sketched in some little palm trees up there at the top really loosely, of course, right now. I'm using new pastels like I normally do at this stage and I am working towards an alcohol wash underpainting, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit to add some depth. I, I want a lot of color in the darks on this piece, but right now this is just a blue, um, I believe, a new pastel. I need to look back at those colors for you. And also kind of a mauvey purple. These are both colors that I want to shine through this black sand. And if you've ever been to an area with a black sand beach, usually higher up on the shore, there's also a more regular sandy area where the shells have been pushed up, the broken shells. But then on Hawaii, there is constant lava flow into the ocean. And when that lava hits the ocean, it explodes. And so it is usually more in the very beginnings of the shoreline. So there, there, there are different colors to the shoreline. This, this that I'm painting right now is just sweeping in that darkness then also I'm going to be working towards more classic sand colored beach as the top of the horizon on that little edge. I'm wanting to darken that foreground a little bit more. I really want to get some great color to this black sand. I probably won't, will use very minimal actual black because I want this to have some color and, and beauty to it and just add layers of, of vibrancy and luminescence. So I'm choosing to put more of a, this is a mauvish purple, I guess you should, you could call it, maybe it's the orchid color, and also that's a Richeson light purple pastel on the areas where there's going to be blue or water. And I'm choosing analogous colors. This is a more moody scene because of this black sand. If I was wanting to be more vibrant, I might use more pink, more pinks in the water because then when you layer the blues over it, those pinks and those blues vibrate together. This is going to be a little bit more analogous, which is a little calmer. Those are calmer colors next to each other because there's not so much contrast in color.
Then a little bit of sand color on this that little spit of distant land right there. Just trying to fill that area. I'm gonna lighten it up in a little bit. Now what I'm showing you is I'm actually doing watercolor over my alcohol wash. I'm using my white board in the background to just kind of test my colors. I'm also wanting to add those darks, translucent darks into the wave in a little different way than I normally do with just the alcohol wash. One thing I really like about this technique of using the watercolor over the alcohol wash is that you can continue to layer that translucent color like I said. Oftentimes if you just use watercolor, it's not quite dark enough, especially for me who I love that contrast of values. And watercolor just dries so much lighter. This is a great way to increase the darks. Just add just another layer of, of luminescence and translucence to your underpainting. This is a blue new pastel. It's a little lighter color than dark darks that I love to use, but I'm wanting, I want to kind of make the distance a little bit hazy and they, the, those trees in the distance do need to have a strong dark base to them. I want to reiterate palm tree, the stalks, or I guess the trunks of the palm trees, and also those bases of the trees. Because remember, whenever we're talking about value, that upright trees are usually darker than anything else in the landscape. Now that is not true in this case because we have black sand. There's not very many places in the world where there is black pure sand. And so that will be the darkest value. And of course, it's also the closest thing to us as the viewer. And so it's going to be a little bit more heavily saturated than the distant trees. And so that's why I'm adding the same color blue, that same color blue that I just put in the distance to be kind of the dark tree basis to have a good value going off in, in the distance. And then I also added a little bit of that blue in the foreground just so we could have some color cohesion and harmony throughout the piece. This is also a very dark blue hard pastel. I'm really wanting to make sure that this, this strong contrast at the very foreground is going to show and imply black sand even though I'm not using black. It's a dark enough value, especially for what I'm planning, which is to add that there is white foam that's sweeping up onto the sand. But you can also see that there is this sand, this black sand showing through that water is transparent. So when it washes up on shore, you can see that darkness through the water. And so I don't want to leave those areas completely void of darkness. I'm gently scumbling a little bit of that, of that darkness onto that area that's a little bit more mauve in tone. The reference photo here, and I've mentioned before this month especially, that I am looking at the reference photos a little bit more literally than my normal tree landscapes, mostly because oceans, that's something I don't paint often as well. Just something different and unique and unique to me anyway. looking at the reference photos a little bit more just because I want to make sure that I am following the nature, the gravity, nature, um, how waves move is different. I can move a tree around and nobody would know, but if I paint a wave that doesn't follow the law of nature and gravity, then that will look odd and it makes a viewer question the painting instead of believing the painting. 
filling in with some ultramarine blues, of course, more classic ocean colors there in the distant horizon line and also right there where I'm working right now, which is just the kind of the crest of that wave and how it washed up on the shore. There's that one little area that's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated um, or brighter value, I guess I could I should say, than that, that dark, dark foreground. This right now that I'm using is actually a gray Giro. It's just toning down some of this water. You know, all of the water isn't this pure, pure blue. There are definitely grays in the water, especially because the sand is so dark. We don't want, we don't, I don't want this piece to look cartoonish or too vibrant. I want it to have moody effects. You can see the marks I'm making. There's just some foam swirling and swishing around, painting those fun little marks. I'm also using, this is a lighter gray for the distance. The, the waves are crashing, of course, as waves do. They come, they roll in in sets. There are different sets pictured here. There's the one that's already crashed on that's rolling up, and then there's several behind it. And so you have to think about the ones in the distance, we probably wouldn't, they wouldn't be as white in the painting as the ones in the foreground would be, or at least not in a painting. We want this painting to recede. We want these different elements to imply distance. If we applied the same color in the foreground and in the distance, then everything would look like it was on the same plane. And we don't want to, we don't want to do that. So right now I'm, I'm, this is a much brighter white that is actually a creamy white from Townsend sketching in that, that very first flush of foam onto that that black sand and also the little rivulets in the water as they are pushed up on the shore. going to start bringing in some color to those distant trees. I don't want to bring in a lot of detail right now. This is a Richeson really cool dark green. and also pulling in a more neutral, a very, very neutral green, using my fingers to blend a little bit. Also thinking about the fact the upright trees are pretty dark. So even though these are receding, I still need them to read like they're the same, like the correct value.
enjoyed watching that pastel come to life. It was so much fun to paint. It's always fun to teach you new techniques and I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this video a like. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can know when a new video comes available. If you'd also like to help support this content coming out, every little bit helps. I would love it if you would consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. Thank you so much for considering it. Thank you for spending your time with me today and I will see you around.